your brain, you're in the nerd's domain. Come on in, it's about to begin. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Nerds Domain Podcast. This week, I am sitting with Dean Shaw of Epic Productions, and we're going to talk about his Kickstarter, uh, The Taste of Revenge. It's a spaghetti western feature film. Um, hi, Dean. How you doing? Very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being on. Um, we got, I've got a couple of standard questions I ask everybody, and then we'll get into your project. Um, in the impending zombie apocalypse, what is your weapon of choice? Oh, good question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is a good question. I think it would be either a baseball bat or an axe. No, those um, are good I'd choices. Go, I'd probably go for a. You know, I don't know. I'd probably go for the axe to be honest, because that's pretty much that's quite bloody and gory. So I'd probably go for that one. You know. All right. Yeah. Um, and uh, given all of the sci-fi that you know, what planet do you most want to visit? Um. I quite liked Mars in the original Total Recall. Um, okay. And then, it all, and it all starts falling apart, and we realise that you know there's 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 more than meets the eye. But I liked that up until that point. And I'm trying to think back to all the like the, the old Star Trek Next Generation ones, where they used to go to these weird and wonderful planets, and there used to be nothing but women there. Uh, but oh, I can't yeah. remember any. Of those names. So I'd probably have to stick with Mars for the time being, and then, uh, and then when the name of those uh, planets come to me, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in with that one. But probably between those two, that'd be that'd be the ones. Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, start off with uh, kind of your sales pitch. What are you doing with um, the Taste of Revenge, and why do you have such a passion for this kind of project? Right. Well, the the Taste of Revenge is going to be a spaghetti western that will be shot entirely in Spain, like they were done 30-odd uh, years ago um, by the likes of uh, Sergio Leone, um, sort of Clint Eastwood, Charles Bronson, all these uh, sort of Hollywood legends now uh, were sort of went off and done these spaghetti westerns, which were much more grittier, um, had a sort of, sort of European flair to them compared to the American westerns that were shot at the time. So I'm trying to rejuvenate that sort of genre um, and make a really gritty uh, western that's going to be uh, more character driven and uh, try and steer away from the the usual Hollywood films that we're seeing at the moment which seem to be very visual effects uh, very comic book at the moment and just try and go back a little bit and see if we can make a little bit more, more grit so okay. that, that's, that's, that's the plan that's the plan for the spaghetti western yeah so you're going to return to, like, the flavor of the classics? Yes, that's what I'm going to try and do. I mean, you've obviously got to cater for the modern audience, but without, without ruining the whole genre entirely, you've, you've, you've still got to maintain what made those films great, but then also sort of look at the modern audience's tastes and, and what they're expecting from a film. I don't think you can get away with having maybe a, a three-minute take like maybe Sergio Leone did in you know, once upon a time in the West where you just have the camera fixed. I don't think audience will, will get that. They won't understand why you've done that. So you'll have to sort of cut it a bit quicker, but you'll still have that gritty sensation uh, that you got with the old spaghetti Westerns. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and tell us a little bit about yourselves. Um, what kind of, what kind of experience do you have with film and uh, production? Well, my job is a director for commercials. Um, I do a lot of commercials for mainly motorsport, ironically. Uh, so instead of using cars, I'm going to be using horses. Um, but normally um, it's uh, the Formula One I've done, uh, adverts for that, uh, that are shown throughout cinemas and, uh, and on the TVs. Um, I do a lot of work for small manufacturers such as Toyota, um, glossy sort of shots uh, where you probably spend two months or so talking about the actual shoot, then you're there for two days, and then you spend another two months talking about how you're going to get the, how edited to how the client wants it. So a lot of talk and not a lot of action, and I sort of want to switch that around and okay. uh, do more action. <laughs> and uh, do you have a like a film degree or... No, no. I mean, pretty much it's self-taught, and I've been a bit lucky, I guess. Um, I started off doing 
small web commercials for my friends companies and then i done a documentary for an, a friend of mine called uh, gavin halls and he was doing a a race at brands hatch in in england so he was racing these uh single seater racing cars and when he went back to his day job um everyone was like i've seen your documentary it's amazing who is this guy and he started saying oh you know you, you can get a hold of him he's he's easy to find and then slowly but surely all these sort of jobs started coming in and more opportunities came and i just sort of rode the wave and went from doing small web commercials that lasted 30 seconds that went on people's um uh, websites and on youtube a few documentaries and then went right up to commercials and uh, ones that are now shown in many different countries and many different been many different cinemas around the world Okay, so, so it sounds like lucky. not necessarily <clears throat> not necessarily a full degree, but you've you've done this for a while and you, you've got a good handle on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, you can't you can't um, you can't bluff your way. You have to sort of you learn the hard way. You make a mistake and you you know you'll never make that mistake again. And you just keep moving forward and sort of developing your skills and pushing the pushing the boundaries a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm looking at your Kickstarter pays. It looks like you're asking for um, 174,000 pounds, which uh, yep. translates to uh, about 281 thousand dollars in American. That's a, that's a lot of money. And I know. It's it's a lot of money, but it looks like you've got it broken down, and you 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 got a, a good budget here, um, kind of showing where everything's going and and what exactly you're doing with it. So it, it looks like your your expertise with uh, shooting commercials is probably coming in handy here. Yeah, and and yeah. you won't end up going way over budget or anything like that. No, because no, you kind of realize once you've done it a few hundred times almost, but you <laughs> you kind of realize what things are going to cost just by looking at the page and you can say right well that, that shot there would be a great shot if we had the money but if we don't then we can do it this way and, that, and that's kind mm -hmm. of the way we've looked at it you know, instead of spending maybe a day having some elaborate crane shot that comes down over the over the over the town why don't we just have the the camera follow the rider as he comes straight in like on maybe a steady cam and he jumps off and he walks straight in and and that way you've done it all in one but you've mm -hmm. saved yourself around about three thousand dollars in the process, and if you yeah, if you apply absolutely. that logic every day, um, and you, I mean, you have to call in a few favors. You have to call in people that you've worked with before and say, look, you know, can you spare two weeks, one week, four weeks, you know, and we'll feed you, we'll put you up somewhere. It won't be great, but we'll put you up somewhere. Would you do it for us for nothing? And they're like, yeah, of course, you know, it's, it's a western nobody's ever done a western that i know of um so it's kind of like i mean they might not want to do a second one with me but <laughs> the first one everybody's wanting to jump on and say yeah i'll do that for nothing so that's that's Good. saved us a lot of money yeah and it looks like uh you've got pledge levels anywhere from five pounds all the way up to five thousand pounds so you've got a lot of different options there and and at the higher end it looks like you're, you're gonna let people you're gonna uh if i'm seeing this right you're gonna fly people out and uh have them on the set to do a speaking part. That's right. That, right? Yeah. It, that one there won't make us a lot of money, but it'll certainly be a lot of fun for people. If if you wanted to get into a movie, if you if you wanted to get into do a speaking part in the role in in the film, and it's it's one of those roles that you just want to say, I just want to have a few lines in there, and then that's it, my bit done. That is, this is a perfect pledge for you, and we'll fly them out. It won't be first class. It won't even be business class <laughs> it, it may well be in in in, in cargo uh, but if it is uh it will we'll give you some sandwiches and then once they've flown out here we're going to sit them down we're going to give them some dialogue which they'll co be comfortable with and we'll just let them hang out and see how we're going to how we're going to shoot it and really get to grips with the whole process and have their moment to shine you know so they can say yep that was me i was the bartender i was the sheriff i was the blah 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 and that's my 15 seconds of fame um in a, in a, in in a motion picture so yeah okay. we try and try and get people involved in it i wanted people to there's a couple more on there where they they get a prop from the film um or even some spent ammo from the gunfight at the very end every western has to end with a massive gunfight you know it can't oh, just be it can't just be that they shake hands and go Let, let's forget about it they have to it has to end in 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 a bloody gunfight and there's going to be lots of blanks fired, and we're going to collect them all up 
and we're going to send them out to everybody who's, who's pledged that certain amount, along with the poster and all the other bits and pieces. So they'll actually have some spent ammo from the actual gunfight at the very end. So there's some cool things on there that it, I thought, well, if I saw that, I would pledge because I want, I'd want something like that. Yeah, and one of my when we started looking at your Kickstarter to do this for, uh, one of my researchers said, "Well, if we if a lot of people back at that, does that make the gunfight at the end even bigger?" So yeah. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I recently saw um, oh, Free Ten to Yuma. Is it Free Ten? Mm-hmm. I always get it confused. Yeah. yeah, and I was just like, that is that is a gunfight. That is a great one where the, he he gets all of the townsfolk to. Get, Ever, uh, and says, look, if you kill this guy, um, you know, we'll give you this much money. And what he then realizes is that, you know, they're shooting indiscriminately at anybody. And the likelihood is they're going to shoot Russell Crowe by accident. So he then yeah. starts shooting the people that are shooting at Russell Crowe and Christian Bale. And I just thought, that's a great gunfight. It's, it's, it's moving, it's fluid. And if I can recreate some something not identical you never want to copy something but if you create a fluid gunfight like that where many different movements and camera shots are used to to capture that energy in there uh you're going to be using some serious blank stuff there's going to be some some serious amount of lead being flung about so yeah we're uh, i'm aiming for something that big and as i say the bigger the more money we have the bigger the gunfight gets you know it could it could be it could be very very big <laughs> Okay. It looks like there's a couple of levels for uh, people that want to be producers, um, yeah. and there's all kinds of stuff, um, signed uh, signed shots and an HD download. And so there's all kinds of levels here, lots of lots of different options um, yeah. that that kind of allow for any kind of thing that you want to do here. Even even the five dollar or the five pound donate um, level is, you know, you they they still get their name shouted out on Facebook. Um, and that, that's that's kind of nice. Definitely, definitely. We, you, you, not everybody's going to have thousands of thousands of pounds or dollars to donate, and I appreciate that. And and every every donation, every pledge is 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 greatly received, whether it's a small amount, and they just say, "Look, I love your projects. This is as much as I can give." That's that's great for me because that means that somebody's actually taken the time to to look at the video. They've seen why I'm doing it. Um, they've they've got on board and they've they've actually given an extra ten minutes of their time to to just to donate and pledge and then become part of the filmmaking group that we are because if you're doing that you're a filmmaker whether you're a, whether you're an armchair one or whether you're actually sitting there and pressing the record button on the camera you know as far as I'm concerned if you're helping me get to this stage we're all filmmakers together so um, yeah the smallest amount is is like you say five pounds and that goes right up to executive producer so sometimes it's almost impossible to get the right money together to to make a a feature film and here's an opportunity to have your name credited on imdb um as an executive producer you know so it's uh it's one of those things that if you're looking to get into the business it's perfect it's absolutely perfect for you because it's not a lot of money oh wait so it is a lot of money but it could be a lot more if you had to start from the ground up and and produce your own project absolutely so um it looks like you you've got three weeks left on this uh yep. this will go up tonight uh on the third so you've got three weeks left on this it ends on the 25th um once this is complete and uh, i'm we're all crossing our fingers that you're gonna you're gonna fund um what 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 do we have from the future from you do you have other ideas for another spaghetti western maybe a, a sequel if it allows it or yeah what all do you have in mind we've yeah, we've kind of, I've looked at it, I don't want to close the film at the end where people will go, well, that's that, that's just going to be one, isn't it? But then I don't want to leave it so that everyone goes, oh, there'll be a second one. I want to leave it that we can come back to it, but if we're going to come back to it, it's going to be a good a good sequel. Um, mm. I've, I'm now in Spain right now, location hunting, and I am absolutely amazed that this country is not, in the cinemas more often because it is so diverse from the the mountains and the canyons and the the prairie the, the all this sort of space open space you've got here it is very inspirational so i can see another spaghetti western being made most definitely because there's just such a scope um visually just uh, it just inspires you just to look at it so i f- I think there's another Spaghetti Western. Whether it be a direct sequel to this one, I'm not quite sure. Um, but I'd, I'd like to do a, I'd like to do another one. Just 
depends on how this one goes. If this one almost kills me, then maybe I might, might reconsider. <laughs> I might do like a, a, a rom-com or something. But, um, you know, uh, but, um, but uh, yeah, this place is amazing. Spain is amazing and it really needs to be filmed a lot more. Um, I don't think audiences around the world have seen the best of it yet and I hope to, hope to do more for it. Well, uh, that, that all sounds great. I'm, I'm looking, I, I like the idea of filming in Spain. I know that it's such a beautiful country. And uh, there's there there is a lot of diversity, especially with uh, with a lot of the stuff that they've shot there in the past. So, um, is there anywhere we can see you in the next year or so? Are you going to any conventions? I don't know if I don't know of anything that you might go to, but is there anywhere we could find you and and see more of what you're doing? Yeah, I mean, there's at this moment in time, I've not I've not booked for anything as yet. Normally, we'll do. Um, I've done a very a few uh, sort of uh, film schools, and when I say small, they're probably only four or five people. Where we just get together, we we in a day we shoot a uh, whether it be a commercial or a, um, a music video, and we just try and get using the camera as much as possible. They're sort of ad hoc, and we just put them up, or I, I put them up, and then about a month later we then go and do them. Um, but I really need to start traveling a bit more. I've got to be honest with you. I've got to be getting out there and, and meeting people and, and going to more conventions. I think the problem I have is, is that when we do commercials, um, or when I personally do commercials, it, I generally fly to the Middle East where I do quite a lot of work, or I've started working more in Europe, but I've never really ventured too far across the pond to, to America yet. So I need to start to, to look to there and start to say, right, well, I need to go to this convention or this film festival. Um, obviously, we've done rain dance and, and I've been to a few days and support a few of my friends who have gone elsewhere, you know, just turned up and done it, but not really as my own entity yet. So, uh, so I need to get out more, I think. <laughs> so no, no exact plans, but you definitely, you definitely want to move that way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, is there anything else you can tell us about the project that you haven't hit on? Anything else that you want to plug? Anything at all? Well, I mean, the project for me, if, if any, guy, any of these guys that are listening to this go on Kickstarter and, and actually press the video, you'll see uh, the, the, the reasons why I think it's time for a Spaghetti Western to, to reemerge in, in cinemas. Um, you know, distribution now is... is is much more wider. It doesn't have to be uh, go through the main studios. So that that that's sort of that's sort of aiding us along. And also, this funding platform is is helping filmmakers to realise their dreams. Um, for me, on a personal level, I want to make the film because um, I recently lost my dad. My dad passed away um, quite suddenly, and um, I kind of it's kind of given me a wake up call that. He got to see some of my commercials and documentaries, but I never got to make a feature film. And that that's sort of like that's a that's a sort of a burden I, I carried. I didn't quite fulfill my potential when he was here to see it. And, and that's why it's become uh, sort of an all encompassing mission at the moment to really to get this film made so I can I can do that. I can tick that box and say, yep, I've done that. I he loved a, a good Western. He also loved a good war film as well. So we could possibly be looking at <laughs> that one. But yeah, he loved a good Western. And, and, and I think he'd like this one. And I really just want to, I want to do it as much for myself as, 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 as for him as well. So that's on the personal level. Uh, but as I say, I feel the I feel the audiences are ready for a spaghetti Western. And I think it's a, it'll be a breath of fresh air. Okay. Um, can we catch you? Are you on Twitter or, or on Facebook? Where can we find you on there? Yes, I am. I've, I've rejuvenated my Twitter account. I, I was like one of these many people who signed up for it and then forgot about it. Um, you can find me uh, at the real Dean Shaw. That's the real Dean Shaw. Um, and also, you can find us on Facebook, uh, The Taste of Revenge. We've got a, a group and we've got a page as well on there. So uh, it's slowly starting to pick up, um, pick up sort of momentum. 
So you can okay. see our behind the scenes photos. Uh, we're starting to do behind the scenes uh, videos as well. Um, although they're pretty awful because it's kind of like a, a last minute thing. Whilst you're talking to someone, you think, oh, I really should be filming this. <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. And then so you quickly get, quickly get to film it and then you kind of go, oh, we should have filmed more about this because you're talking to people <laughs> who are going to ultimately help you. Or you're, like the other day, I was talking to a couple of members who are hope uh, of the cast and. And I got to the end of it, and I thought I really could have done with with video in the whole thing. But then some of them may or may not be going forward to be actually cast in it, and then that would be unfair for them to be in the in the behind the scenes yeah. for not yet making to the film. So you're to tread on sort of eggshells with that one. Um, but yeah, there's going to be much more media coming out, particularly in the next twenty days, where we've really got to ramp it up a lot to get to that target. Okay, um, we can. I think we can also find you at EpicShot.tv. Is that correct? That's that's right. That's our website. Um, EpicShot.tv um, is where we've got a little bit of our show reel from uh, the work we've done previously, and it's also got my email address on there. So if anybody wants to contact me direct, um, then yeah, it'd be great to hear from people. Yeah, I've had a few people have emailed me and have offered support, whether it be technical support or uh, a donation. And uh, there's one guy actually in Spain who says I can use his house. So, <laughs> so uh, it, the right support on. is starting to come in thick and fast. It's really, it's really, it's quite humbling. I'll be honest with you. It, 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 it sort of, um, it, so many people are starting to, uh, starting to warm to the project that it does, it does really sort of strike you and make me feel quite humble, really. Well, good. Um, you can go to uh, tinyurl.com slash taste of revenge, and that'll take you right to the Kickstarter. Um, and I have backed the Kickstarter, and I, I encourage you guys to go look at it. And if you see something you like, and I, I think you will, um, I suggest you, you check out kick, backing it as well. You could be a producer and get your name up on IMDb, um, all kinds of, uh, you know, validly. And uh, I, I really think it's a. It's a great thing. So, uh, Dean, thanks for your time. No, and, no problem. Uh, Thank you. I think that'll do us tonight for Nerds Domain Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Quiet or um, on Facebook at facebook.com slash Nerds Domain. You can always head over to iTunes and give us a rating and throw some stars up there and write something down. Um, and you can find our shirts over at tinyurl.com slash ND Shirts. And we will talk to you guys real soon. Mm-hmm.